Welcome to another video that I didn't really have a whole lot of time to put into because I've been busy resimplifying, resimplifying, simplifying my website and working on emotes for channel memberships. And so now you have access to Keanu, your breathtaking, as part of being a member of the channel. And I have to go to the gym and work out before it closes. It's shoulder day today, and I'm getting, as you can tell, I'm getting a little soft here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the rest of the video like this, where I just have my arm absolutely flexed here for no reason. <laughs> All right, so if you if you live in the U.S., we have these things called equal employment opportunities. This is basically a way for companies to not discriminate against you. But there's this website called better team which gives you a huge list of things that you can ask as an employer and things that you can't but it gives you like a workaround way to ask the things that you're not allowed to say which i thought is kind of ridiculous um let me just go through the list so right here it says illegal interview questions equal opportunity employer guidelines so not permitted do you own your home or rent your home who do you live with how are you related to the people you live with so you can't you can't ask that question because they don't need to know that they don't need to know who you live with. They don't need to know if you own your house or not. Like none of that actually matters, but it can give them an indication of how financially stable or unstable you are. And then they might judge the people that you hang out with, but they give you a little permitted. How long have you been at your current address? What is your current address? What was your previous address and how long did you live there? And so obviously if you have a whole bunch of previous addresses, they can tell that you're probably renting unless you've been at one place for a long time. And what's stopping them from going there and looking on Google Maps and dropping in. So this is, you can't ask the question, but th they know, we both know that there's ways around this. Here's one that a lot of people get hit with is ageism and no doubt that this stuff exists. All this discriminatory garbage exists and it sucks. And this is a really common one. So they're not allowed to ask you, what year were you born? And you're over here giving them the free answers on your LinkedIn. And so here they give you the permitted version. For some roles, age is a legal requirement working in a bar. So it might be acceptable to ask a candidate their age and ask for proof, but otherwise they can't. And this is kind of where LinkedIn is terrible because it makes you put the dates that you worked somewhere on LinkedIn when you put your job experience. And I think that is like the downfall of LinkedIn. When you put experience of the places that you worked, it doesn't let you just put the place in the description. I think it requires you to put the date that you worked there, which is giving HR free ammo basically to see how old you are and so I always say stay away from dates if you can and want young single people that are ready to hustle for like no money ready to work 120 hours and it's easy to tell when someone's established in their life they're not gonna probably put up with this BS oh yeah he's probably got a family and probably got kids we're not gonna be his priority and that's just you know that's the problem with telling people your age and so you don't give them that ammo please take that ammo away from them all right here's another one arrest record usually only law enforcement agencies can ask this but for some businesses that are like secret clearance for like government jobs and stuff like that they can ask you about that because that will just disqualify you if you have like felonies and stuff so typically they can't ask you about your arrest record so if you're going into the industry and you you've got some like legal history just be upfront and honest about it like this is what happened this is what you're gonna find when you pull the background check i just want to let you know i'm not that person anymore i'm just looking for an opportunity to work and do good work and benefit the company and myself i'm in a better place now sorry that you'll see that but i just wanted to be upfront and honest with you and that's probably how i'd handle like the legal stuff and then some companies are just not going to give you a chance no matter what you do but i think if you don't tell them and they're going to hit you with the background check and then they pull it up they're going to be like why didn't you tell us about this you know that we're going to find it right availability okay so here's a super super big red flag um someone asked how do you normally spend your sundays and you're not allowed to ask how do you spend your weekends and stuff like that and that's because you can tell someone's religion based off of that like oh how do you you know do you normally have a lot of free time on sundays they're looking to see if you go to church basically if you go to church on sundays what happens if you're if you're going to church on saturdays and you're a different religion or you're doing this or that and so they're not allowed to ask you how you spend your weekends because people are discriminatory and if you ever get like well how do you spend your sundays just just know that they're trying to figure out they want to know if you're free for extra work, open to extra work on weekends, or they're trying to figure out if you're religious. They give you a workaround here. What days and shifts can you work? Are there shifts you cannot work? Are there any responsibilities that you have that could make it difficult for you to travel for work? And so they're basically asking you the same thing in the legal way, and you should be able to see right through that if they ask you that. What days and shifts can you work? 
You know, that's if, if you can't work on Sundays because you got church stuff to go to, then you're going to say, I can't work on Sundays. And then they're going to know that, you know, th they're going to figure it out. So, like, if they start asking you these questions, just say, oh, you know, just your regular shifts. And just be very careful with how you answer these things because they're playing you with these questions. So they're not allowed to ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? But they're allowed to ask you, are you legally eligible to work in the United States? Basically the exact same thing. They're just phrasing it differently. They can't ask you, can you provide a birth certificate? They can't ask you, what country are your parents from? Or how long did it take for you to learn your native language that you have here listed, your secondary fluent language? They're not allowed to ask you anything about that stuff. But what companies do is they might hear an accent. Let's say like you immigrated, and but you're, you're a citizen of the country, just like all of my fellow Americans here in the United States, but you immigrated. So you have a little bit of an accent and they might be like, oh, you a US citizen? Credit inquiries. Do you have a bank account? Do you own or rent a home? Have your wages ever been garnished? Were you ever declared bankrupt? They can't a ask all those questions about your finances, but there will be some companies that would be like, all right, we're gonna need to run your credit. It's legal for them to run your credit if you allow them to do so, but they're trying to see like, you know, how are you with your finances? And I don't think it's a company's business to know how you are with your finances. Like, even if you had some history before and you're different and you're managing your money now where someone was on your card and they ran your card and they ruined your credit, like, you get, you get, people get screwed over all the time by, like, co-signing with people and then some stuff happened and it's on their record. I don't think it's a company's business to know about your finances at all. You give me the paycheck, I do the work. That is the agreement we have. So if a company's asking you, can we check your credit? Absolutely not. One company that I applied to asked me if I ever received unemployment. And you want to know why they were asking that? Is because companies have to pay their employees unemployment. Unemployment. That's coming out of the company's pocket. And so if they have ever asked you, have you received unemployment before? That's that's an indication to them that if they fire you for whatever reason or they downsize the company and let you go for whatever reason, that you're probably going to take out unemployment if you can and they're going to have to pay you. These are really shady things that companies do. And so if they start asking about your finances, just know that they can't really legally ask you about your finances and stuff like that because it's not their business. What you do with your money is, is your money. It's you do the work, the company pays you. That's all. All right, so here's one. If you have a if you have a disability, they're not they're not allowed to say, "Do you have a disability? Have you ever filed a workers' compensation claim? Have you ever suffered a workplace injury?" So some companies out there might be like, you know, you will routinely have to lift 60 plus pounds and be on your feet all day, you know, do you accept that? And like, it's for a programming job, you know? So like, there's some really crappy companies out there that are just discriminating for no reason. And like, all I gotta do is lift my fingers. What are you talking about lifting 60 plus pounds? Like remodeling the office or something? Like, what are we doing here, you know? Don't fall for it. Companies are trying to fish things out to get the best deal and um education what year did you graduate high school do you have a high so they can't ask when or what high school because if they ask what high school you went to that high school might not be around anymore they maybe changed it so let's say you went to this high school but they renamed it recently in the past 10 years okay well if you graduated when it was named that previously then you're gonna know that i'm older and again this is the age discrimination thing what was the start and finish titles Okay, they can kind of gauge your age range through there too. I mean, like you're getting debated by these questions. What is your current and expected salary? I don't give away your current salary. That's just stupid. Don't tell them how much you're currently making. You've just given them the upper hand. You've walked across the NFL football field with your playbook and handed it over to the company. Okay, don't give them your current salary. Just be like, well, I don't really feel comfortable telling you my current salary. I prefer to talk numbers at a later time. What is your budget for the position, by the way? Maybe say something like that. I mean, you don't have to directly be like, well, I'm gonna get paid 85 when you get paid like 60. I mean, play the game because that's what they're doing to you. Family status. They can't ask about family status because people discriminate based on if you got kids and prior obligations and other obligations outside of life and to where like they might not want to hire you if you got a whole bunch of kids that you got to go take to daycare and drop off and handle all this stuff outside of work, which is perfectly legal, perfectly okay to do, but companies might hit you with that overtime and when you got that salary you ain't getting compensated for that overtime and so it can be really easy to discriminate against people who have families and who have kids or if you're a young single woman they want to know if you're recently married or something like that oh well then she's probably going to have a kid and then we're going to have to do the whole maternal thing and she's going to be gone and then like you know we're going to have to deal with that you know um, they can ask do you have any commitments that might prevent you from working the assigned shifts and 
eh, it's kind of hit or miss. That's up to you to be however honest you want to be, but don't give them any giveaways about your family status. Don't be like, I'm married, I'm not married, all, all that stuff. They can ask you that for healthcare reasons after you get the job, when you fill out the healthcare form for like insurance and stuff, to get people on your insurance. Like if you're married, you can get your, your spouse on the insurance with you, but like otherwise, don't give them that before you get hired, okay? They don't need to know that. That's just HR paperwork stuff for insurance if they offer that. Financial status, again, more questions. Do you own your home? Do you own a car? They don't need to know about that. You don't need to know if I own my car, if I rent my car, if I own my house, or if I rent an apartment. You don't need to know anything about that. They can ask if you have transportation. They can't say, do you own a car? Like, they can ask if you have a driver's license and stuff like that, and they can ask, do you have transportation to and from the location? But they can't say, do you own the car or do you rent the car? Don't give them away. Don't be like, yeah, I have a car. Just be like, yes, I have a, I have a way to get to and from work. Yes, I have transportation. Okay, don't give them that. They don't need to know about your finance. Okay, so for for military service, they can't ask you why you were discharged or anything like that. I mean, they can see honorable, dishonorable, but they can't ask you about it. Okay, and they can't ask you about any non-U.S. military service either. They, what they can ask you, which is almost the same thing, what experience and training did you receive while you were serving that would benefit this job? And so it's up to you to realize what they're asking inside of that question. They wanna know what happened to what you were doing and be careful if you're telling that story not to give them the wrong impression, okay? So th they're, they're playing the game, they're bamboozling you. Just understand, finesse these questions. All right, organizations. Are you a member of the local country club? What sorority did you join? Can't ask about that stuff because it shows things about like religion, things about like ethnicities and stuff like that, or orientations and stuff like that, age, all that stuff. They can't ask you about what you do outside with your recreational clubs. So I know a lot of you guys out there are putting your interests down on your resume. Just be very careful that it's easy for a company to see what you're into the things that you do that that may or may not they may or may not want you for the job you know if you put that you you go to sunday school every wednesday and you teach there you know that's well boom that's like an obvious indication if you go to like a a golf club for seniors or you know like the 40 plus golf club or meetups that you're a part of for like older singles or whatever like they're, you're giving away information without knowing that you're giving away information you give away your age sex orientation religion all that stuff that shouldn't matter but you're giving it away and people are assholes and i'm sorry that you have to deal with this but you know don't give away that sort of information apparently they can ask are you a member of a professional organization they can ask that but you could just be like i prefer not to say that's that's how you answer that question so they can't ask what specific clubs you're a part of but they can say are you a part of any clubs just be careful how you answer that question, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Let me give you some, some red flags to look for when you go into the interview about the company. See if you actually want to work there. Because it's a two-way street, right? If you go in there, first thing, and you see that like all the employees are just bummed out and everyone's just kind of like... If companies are like, we work hard and we play hard, this is typically indicative of you having to do a bunch of unpaid overtime and then you'll have to be required to do mandatory drinks at the end, you know? Oh man, we really worked that overtime, got that project done, let's all go grab a beer. And then if you don't want to, you know, you're not you're not playing hard anymore. If you ask them questions about the pay, like they're, they're allowed to ask you what your current salary is, I guess. But if you ask them questions about, well, what's your budget for the position and what's the pay for this position? And what's my growth trajectory look like? Do I have a plan for growth? Am I gonna be assigned someone that's gonna tell me how to move up inside this company? That's what you should get. If they don't give you that, that's a pretty big red flag. You should have a clear path of promotion within the company. And if they're not gonna have that there for you, or at least be able to talk about it, that means that probably doesn't exist inside the company, which means you might end up stagnating, which means you'll probably end up stagnating. Is how do I move up in this company? And if they have no idea, that's probably a pretty big red flag that they're unorganized. If they start asking you to do things that are not inside of the job description, coupled with, oh, well, we're short staffed right now. Do you mind? I know it's not really part of the description, but you know, we're, we're trying to fill other roles right now. And be aware they might say that in the interview we're trying to fill other roles right now but what's to stop them from just not doing that once they give all of that responsibility to you and then you just end up doing two people's jobs so they'll say that they're hiring for other positions and then they give all the responsibility to you and you do the job functions your main job function everything on the description and then you do all these other people's job descriptions and then they're just like oh wow i guess he's got it covered and we don't need to hire and now they save a whole bunch of money so in the interview, they'll be like, oh, we're short staffed and, you know, can you cover that? You know, just temporary. Who knows? Are they just going to not hire anyone after that? Like, what's going to happen? That's really 
I'd be very wary. That's a big red flag to me. At any point, if you ever hear the, the, the word, we're looking for someone with a rock star attitude, that just means that you're just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to take whatever they throw at you and you're just gonna have to put a smile on your face, work 100 hours a week for 30K. And that's gonna be the way it goes. We're looking for a Jedi JavaScript engineer, a ninja JavaScript engineer, uh, JavaScript wizard, rockstar, JavaScript, any of that stuff in the description is just giant red flags for me because they have, it's just buzzwords and stuff and like I'm not a rockstar, I'm just a, I'm a software developer and let me do the job. I don't want you imposing any of these stereotype people's attitudes onto me. Like rockstars are like these crazy people that do these crazy things and that's, I, I assume that's what you want out of me for this company, right? You want me to do crazy things and go above and beyond for you? No, that's just a giant red flag. Don't fall into that buzzword hype. If they ever say, we like to see someone going the extra mile. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you are paid to do your job. You're not paid to go the extra mile. You're paid to do your job. And so when people start working all this overtime and stuff, and then they raise the standard of working, be, you know, people start getting penalized just for doing what they were hired to do. And that's a big problem when you start getting paid to go the extra mile, whatever that means at the time, right? Oh, we need you to do this extra thing. Sorry about that. We really appreciate it though that's what extra mile no i'm paid to do the job description that my job says i'm not paid to go the extra mile because you're just gonna be having me run a friggin marathon of extra miles i don't know just be very careful if you ever hear that you know you'll be working late nights weekends probably i don't know i can go on and on about all this shady stuff that people in the interview do if that's what you're interested in hearing i could talk about some of my interview experiences where i was like yeah this is a red flag for me i don't really think that you know what you're doing lady I don't really think that this is a great way to interview somebody. Like, there's a bunch of red flags as me, as an employee. When I was applying to jobs, I was like, yeah, this seems like a crappy company, but you're my only option right now, you know? But So you just keep going through it. I could talk more about that in another video if you guys are interested in that. But I hope that this video has been at least helpful with red flags and how they kind of finagle these questions that you might end up just divulging on your own without realizing what they're really asking you. And then you end up shooting yourself in the foot. But to be honest, to be honest, if someone is doing that to you, you don't want to work for that company. That's a piece of crap company anyways. That's, that's garbage. You don't want to work with people that are trying to discriminate, you know? And if you realize that they're doing that, you should just walk out and you should sue them is what you should do because that's just straight up, you know, oh man, this is the world we live in and it sucks. And I'm really sorry if this happens to you. The ages thing happens to my dad. And like, I know all this stuff happens. I got friends that were like, we're not going to hire you because we think that you're going to get pregnant soon. I'm really sorry. Ugh, so stupid, but don't give away, you know, don't give away the playbook. Play the game. Anyways, um, I'm kind of on a tangent now. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If it has, maybe leave a subscribe. Uh, let me know what you want to see in future videos and maybe consider joining the channel to get that awesome Keanu Reeves emotes, you know, because um, you're breathtaking, guys. You're breathtaking. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm going to go do shoulders now at the gym and i'll see you guys later tonight on twitch uh for doing some game dev and some subscriber games it's twitch.tv slash joshua fluke and uh i'll see you there have a have a good night guys